Hello, my name is Anne, your guide to when animals get even. If you like bloodthirsty animals getting back at humanity, then a rhinoceros, why don't you subscribe now? Now, today's animal has some thoughts about constantly being referred to with a shortened name. It's the rhinoceros, specifically the black rhinoceros. <laughs> conservationist here was working on a project of tagging rhinos so this rhino was not just any old rhino because the project was focused on tagging white rhinos but this group got word of a black rhino in the area and this is it's an exciting opportunity for them because it's rarer than the white rhino um, it's it's not something that they really get to see so it's not only is it like a really cool opportunity but it's a really interesting opportunity for their project the rhino had apparently been encountered before because it had been um dehorned don't freak out because it's not like elephant tusks um rhino horns if you didn't know you probably do but if you didn't they're made of keratin that's the same stuff that makes our fingernails and our hair keratin it's just a kind of protein um, so for them, it grows. It grows through their whole life. It gets sharp because they're always eating grass, so it's always rubbing on the ground, and, and that's actually what ends up like wearing it down to make the point. They are dehorned. That way there's no reason to go after them, right? Because if the whole reason is just for this one thing, and you can remove it without hurting them, why wouldn't you? So, he's been dehorned. And you might think, okay, great. Don't, nothing to worry about. You would be wrong. Rhinos can weigh up to 3,000 pounds, these rhinos specifically. And black rhinos almost exclusively choose fight over flight. <laughs> and they also choose this when they wake up from sedation, specifically. Great! <laughs> but they trained him, they got the collar on, Rhino wakes up and the rhino mad. It, 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 it ends with a rhino chasing a guy up a tree. Yeah, so this rhino wakes up, this rhino decides to charge a researcher. So the rhino stops short of the tree and, and straight up looks at the guy and is extra big mad now because he's like, what the heck? That's not fair. He, uh, the rhino can't climb. This is just an unfair advantage. Um, kind of rude, human. And frankly, look, I would be mad too if the person I was chasing with the intent to smush just got away. So what's actually really scary about this video is that the tree itself, a very small tree, if that rhino had decided to put any of its weight on this tree, it would have fallen over. And the researcher would have fallen with it, and the rhino would have smushed him. Thankfully for him, um, apparently rhino attention spans are short. Who knew? And this rhino was like, ugh. You ruined my fun. I don't have time for this with the rest of my day. And it leaves. And they, they still wait a few minutes before they, like, actually, like, climb down because I'm pretty sure the rhino's not like messing with them and just waiting and lurking to like run at them. Just I know put they all you know, get back on the ground, and they continue their day with tagging white rhinos. And, like, I love that. I think the best part is how he was so high on adrenaline that he was just thrilled with the entire experience. It just really seems like, yes, it was terrifying, but because everything worked out and everyone was okay, it's one of those things that, like, despite the terror of it, it really was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And there's just something like just you can revel in the fact you revel 
in the remembrance of the experience, even though it could have gone horribly wrong. What do y'all think? I think if I had an encounter like that, I think I would, I would take like a little bit to recover, whether that be like weeks or maybe months. And eventually I, I would still end up back out there again, doing the exact same thing that I was doing before. Uh, because I just, I love animals so much. And if I had an opportunity like that, you know, you don't want to waste it. And that is really, really incredible. Obviously, you know, I might be more wary, a little more cautious in the future. But like, what about you guys? I mean, if you had like that once in a lifetime thing and it almost went horribly wrong, but then it didn't. Do you keep pursuing that same kind of thing? Or do you just kind of go, that was enough. I have had it. It was a good time. Never again. Let me know in the comments. I think what usually scares people the most when they look at a rhino is the horn. And yeah, it looks intimidating. And it's right there on their face and in your face. I get it. For example, so we have a guy who, he shows up and he has apparently gotten attacked by two rhinos. And he's got abdominal injuries, chest injuries, shoulder injuries, and thigh injuries. So he's, he be messed up. We don't really have any information to go off of on what exactly precipitated these events because this guy's not telling the story. And look, Never trust the patient. I learned that on house. Patients be lying. I mean, my mind is conjuring up scenarios of like this guy trying to poach rhinos and like it's a mom and a baby and that's how he got attacked by two at the same time. But it easily could have been wrong place, wrong time. We've seen a lot of those stories too in past videos. So it, it's really hard to know what, but like it doesn't really matter how it happened because he was messed up. I mean, like, if you go down to the link to the story, you can find the pictures, but I'm going to tell you right now, they are in detail because this was a medical case study. This was in a journal of medicine, so they don't shy away from the details. They show you the full on filleted meat picture. Um, so be warned if you decide to go look. I thought it would be really cool to share them, but I also know that uh, YouTube would not think that was cool at all. YouTube would be like, that's a little too far. So we didn't. What people should be more concerned about when it comes to rhinos though, is their weight. Yeah. So again, the black rhinos with the 3000 pounds. Um, we have a man who is an experienced rhino handler. That's from his direct supervisor. Experienced rhino handler. And, uh, he got crushed. That's it. That's all we got. We got experienced rhino handler crushed. That was it. The article isn't even worth one paragraph, much less the five teeny tiny baby paragraphs that it got turned into. And I'm not looking for more information because like I have some graphic interest in what happened to him after. I'm trying to find out how it happened and how to not have that happen to me. I have lessons to teach and the lesson I would like to teach is how to avoid being crushed by a rhino. Why is that so hard? It shouldn't be, but alas, we do not have the privilege of knowing how not to get crushed by a rhino. And honestly, it really ticks me off because look, like I get it, like maybe Animal attacks aren't your beat. Maybe you're not really interested in stories like that. But if your job is to be a journalist and that's the story you're assigned, give me something. This is a juicy story. This, I get it. I get it. You aren't the target audience of the story, but your job is to create a target audience for the story. Give us the details. Why is that so hard? There's so many of these animal attack stories where they give us almost nothing. They're like, this attack happened the end. There's so much more to it than that. It's so frustrating. <sighs> I'm doing the best that I can with the stories I get, you guys. I promise. I am. I comb through like so many articles trying to find not only unique stories, but just like ones with actual detail. Because sometimes I can't find them. And I get stories like this and 
<laughs> all I can do is tell you that um, you should be worried about being crushed by a rhino, but not how to avoid it. And I'm very sorry about that. Back to South Africa again, which I mean, like, let's face it, we didn't leave the continent. Why would we? That's where they live. A student, Munz, he was on a trip to... He'd been living in South Africa for two years, okay? He got... It was what he... It was what he wanted to do with his life. Um, he, at like the age of nine, found out about like the World Wildlife Fund's um, Save the Rhino campaign. And from then on, he was hooked. And I get it. I am exactly same boat. I mean, I... I've known that like what I really want to do is something with animals. I didn't want to be a vet because in my little child brain at the time it was like, but then you have to hurt the animal because shots and stuff, right? You're a little kid like shots hurt. I don't want to give shots to animals, but I knew I wanted to work with animals or do something animal adjacent, anything. So here we are. But like he had that too. So he's, he's living in South Africa and he gets the chance to be part of a, an eight person team that's going to go out and check on a rhino. So the thing is like, there's a, a black rhino that the rangers haven't seen in a while. And as we know, there's poachers. So they wanna find out like, is this rhino okay? The rhino should still be around, so why haven't we seen it? Is the rhino injured? Is there, s because in cases where we have like extinct animals that are being monitored, occasionally if they get, not, ex I'm so sorry. It's not extinct, nearly extinct. When we have nearly extinct animals, um, who are being monitored occasionally humans will perform minor interventions like if they're injured they might trank them treat the injury and back out watch to make sure they get up okay and leave it at that they are going through the bush and things take a bad turn you see rhinos have really bad eyesight so what they think happened is the rhino was asleep in the bush it's woken up by the sounds of these people. And as we know, black rhinos are prone to choose his fight. So Munz actually saw the rhino coming and he did a really awesome selfless thing. Um, he pushes the two guys closest to him behind some trees. And he ch also is trying to like clear it to also make it to a tree, but he doesn't quite make it in time. But the fact that he chose to like stop first to, to help these other people first before himself just because like they were there for him to do that for is really awesome and like good job him that's good that that's those are the kinds of people we support here we support the selfless people we support the people who put the animals first so he gets headbutted he is now between a rhino and a tree the rhino is 3,000 pounds, and the tree is, for his human body, this full-grown tree, is an immovable object. He's stuck. The rhino moves in again, takes another run at him. He falls, bangs his head. He feels something run over, like, his leg, and it turns out this black rhino had a calf. There was a little baby rhino, which is probably a big factor in her immediate and then prolonged um, assault. So the baby actually ran over him and when the mother rhino starts to circle for a third time she's going in again because I think to, in her she's taking out this threat. She's not leaving it up to chance. She's looking for like a, a no survivor scenario is what I'm thinking. Which you know yes am I anthropomorphizing the rhino? I sure am. You know what? She's a mama. Mother instincts are pretty much the same, same in almost every animal. Look, I know that sometimes birds crush their own eggs because they don't want to be parents yet. I know about those ones. This rhino has had her baby and has been protecting it. So her instincts are the same as any other mother animal that's protective. All right. On that third rev up, uh, I guess all the other people finally have like coordinated or like, oh look, they're, they're, they're not freaked out anymore. They're, they're, they move to support. They scare the rhino away. Um, 
ostensibly just by being like, ah! I, I don't know. Um, they scared it away. That was all it said was that they scared it away. They didn't give the details. So, Mons has now been attacked by the 3,000 pound mama rhino. She's probably a little less than that, but frankly. And the calf, which is 75 to 110 pounds. And, you know, that's just after they're born. I don't actually know how, how old this baby rhino was. My guess is this baby rhino was at least a few hundred pounds. And it ran over his human leg. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but uh, if that much ton it, like weight hit my leg, uh, it probably wouldn't feel good. Probably, probably wouldn't be good for me. So luckily, after all of this chaos, the grand sum of damage is a bang, banged head because of the fall. Not because of the rhino, but because he fell. Well, I guess that was caused by the rhino. So it is because of the rhino. Whatever. His hip had to be popped back into place uh, from when the baby rhino stepped on him, which, you know, popped into place, not replaced. So we count that as a win. And then the remainder was just substantial bruises. And the good thing about bruises is that they heal. So he was okay. Um, I believe that it said he's still loves rhinos he's not deterred from it by this experience and we love that for him well i think today although we did not get to learn how to avoid being crushed by a rhino thanks a lot journalists um we did learn that black rhinos are known to be the most aggressive of the rhino species and we know that they have a fight first attitude these are good things for you to know so that you can be prepared in the future if you, for whatever reason, run into one. We learned that injuries via horn are rare, although please still avoid that. Thank you. And yeah, rhinos are very cool, very large, and very dangerous. They're not to be underestimated. If you liked this video and you want more bloodthirsty animal content, then subscribe right now! I am here Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Bye! Look, never trust the patient. I learned that on House. Patients be lying.